Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Welcome to the Mother Days. I'm Teresa Palmer. And I'm Sarah Wright Wilson. Hi, Daisy. Hey, Daisies. <laughs> I'm really hoping people aren't watching this today because I spent the entire morning cleaning up Doing shit. What? Cleaning <laughs> up shit all day long. Woo! Oh my and not God. human shit dog shit um so i haven't put on any makeup so i hope that you are not on youtube looking at me right now oh, because dear. i look like a feral <laughs> <laughs> you're insane how are you sarah hi right, guys hi daisies i'm good i'm feeling really good i'm very like um, I don't know why I'm talking about how I'm feeling, but my mood has been very good. Um, a lot of sleep. I have to say that lately when I'm going to bed at night, getting in bed and going to sleep, I'm actually smiling as I get into bed and I'm like, oh, am I loving sleep a little too much? Like I'm oh. so excited to close my so eyes and get warm I. in the bed. <laughs> I love it. It's the best feeling. Like when you put everyone to sleep and you're I'm like, like wait, am I old? And then you like, is bed. this like an old, is this an age thing? Where I'm like just an like, old lady thing. Why am I enjoying no sleep so like I just really want it and then well, in the morning when I wake so up much. I'm like mm, like I don't want to get out of bed <laughs> I know me too but I do have to get out of bed because now I have a thousand dogs and it's not look there are we don't have a thousand dogs but it feels like we have a thousand dogs because we've taken our dogs back. I mean, here's the story, peeps. <laughs> basically, I've had these dogs. Okay, so, so one one of the these dogs is so, pre gaming. <laughs> it's so this is just so my life. Everyone listening knows that I have the craziest stories. The weirdest shit happens to me. Like the oh. most outlandish things happen to me. Anyway, it's very typical Teresa. So. In my old <laughs> abusive relationship with my ex-boyfriend. Oh my God. I was trying to save our like relationship at the time before I realized like what a complete douche stain he was. But um, <laughs> oh my God, that lingo. I I just made that up. Douche stain. Yeah, I liked um, it. It was good. <laughs> thank you so much. My God. Um, anyway, I like adopted a puppy with him but not really with him. I just kind of got it and was like, this is our dog now, you know, trying to keep us together. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, this dog, Coda, um, I've had, so I've had her since 2012. Uh, so she's 12. She's a pit lab um, and 100% deaf. I just can't <laughs> hear anything. Like full gray face. She's like, so cute. She's oh my so God. cute. She is such a cutie. Um but, and she was always like a big swimmer. So she would just take herself off to the swimming pool and do laps on her own. Like you'd hear splashing and you'd look out the window and she was just doing laps in the pool. So she's just been this really fun dog that we've loved for so many years. And then like in her later years, she got a little bit more protective of the family, a little bit dog aggressive um, and just kind of started being a bit mean and not to any of us, but just to other yeah. dogs, like just being like a moody gal. Um, anyway, so we had, I sort of talked about this at some point in the, on the um, podcast. I had this horrendous <laughs> experience. I was like, oh, just I Sarah, Sarah in the middle horrible. of it. It was awful. I had this horrendous, if anyone's watching, you can see I've got this like cr- gnarly scar on my elbow from oh. it. But, um, my, I was pregnant with Prairie and me and Bodie were walking my dog Cato, who is a German shepherd and my dog Coda. This was obviously two and a half years ago, a little bit over. And, um, we had been hiking with him up to the Hollywood sign every single day. It was like my way that I was staying fit during my pregnancy. Yeah. And, I remember um, that. and me and Bodie were just like having these vibes where him and I would just take the dogs out and it was our little thing to do with each other. Anyway, knowing that code is terrible with other dogs, we have this protocol when we pass other dogs that we stop and we like sit down with her and wrap our arms around her. And then we feed her cheese to be like, good girl, good girl for not like attacking dogs anyway so we had just started the walk and I was just reminding Bodie hey dude can you keep the leash a little bit shorter um just when we're popping around the court 
and then literally didn't even get the sentence <gasps> out. And he, I just see him fly around the corner, like just being pulled so fast. And I had like my German shepherd attached to the double pram that I was pushing. Anyway, it was a freaking disaster. So oh. Coda bit this small dog and like just lock jaw on this small dog. I like... We were walking up a hill. I ran to go and get the dog off of this tiny little shih tzu, but then I let go of the pram, which oh, started like I had, I had forest and poet. We oh started to like roll down the hill, but then my German shepherd saved the day because he was attached to the pram. So he flew forward. But then because he did it with such momentum, both kids fell out of the stroller. Oh my God. Poet was like not grazed at all. Um, Forrest had a gash on his knee and oh. I am screaming. I'm 25 weeks. I'm screaming, punching my dog, doing all the things to try and get her off. And then I'd finally get her off. And then Cato, my German shepherd's like, oh, I guess I'll just join in. Oh, like no. he's like such a dumb dumb. Um, he's like really not the sharpest tool in the shed. And he was like, am I, is this what I'm meant to be doing? Is this, is this kind of it? And I'm like, no, stop. So I'd pull one off and then the other. And I was so exhausted. Uh, the, poor, the poor owner was on the ground screaming and I was screaming for help. And it was just this awful, awful, horrible situation. Uh, but I like, I knew I could not let this little dog die. So I was doing anything and I ended up breaking my finger. <gasps> I had a huge hole in my elbow. I forgot elbow. that you broke your finger. Yeah, I broke my little finger. It's never been the same. I mean, it's actually, it's like bent, bent off to the side. <laughs> it's so <laughs> ugly. It looks like, I don't even know. It looks like just like an old lady finger. I think mine naturally are bent. Look, oh, I think oh my, my pinky. Do you see how this one is turned to the side? Oh, that a little one. bit. Yeah, oh. it turns. It's either naturally like that or I broke it as a kid. I don't know. Oh, my God. Well, it's just sort of, it's, and my nails all deformed now. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> so, of course, I did the thing that, like, they say never to do, like, get in the middle of a dog fight. But I could oh, not geez. let this poor little dog go through this. And I was like, this is my fault. I, you know, and Mark wouldn't walk with us that morning. And of course, I'm like, ah, like, if yeah. only I had just been like, okay, I can't actually handle three kids, two dogs being pregnant. It was such an awful experience. Anyway, I finally got the dog off and like neighbors came to the rec rescue, but they actually thought it was a lot worse because they saw this upturned pram like oh. under a parked car. So they thought that, you know, so my kids, kids have been have hit by a hit car. car. Oh exactly. My God. So you know, and I have to say, there were some people that just drove slowly by, <laughs> like rubbernecking it, just like looking at what was going on. And I'm like, like pleading at helping. them for help. Yeah, no one yeah. helped. Thank God someone just, all they had to do was just grab the leash and pull my dog off. And like someone finally did that who wasn't afraid of dogs. And it was just, anyway, this awful experience. But the woman that it happened to her dog. She was so beautiful about it. We paid for the vet bills. It was like $11,000 in vet bills. Oh my God. Um, yeah, I like paid for her to have like PTSD therapy. We were going to go, oh my God. Un like only in LA, by the way, like unpack the trauma together. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, should we, should we go and unpack? And I was like, yes. And wow. she was so beautiful. And thank God it was like the woman up the road who like had this massive statue of Buddha in oh. her front yard. And I was like, thank yeah. God it was a Buddha woman. And then like, thank God she's so zen. Her dog didn't die. Her dog is fine, still alive. Anyway, so after that point, <laughs> we were moving. We decided to move house like very quickly after that. But we we were like, okay, right, I think our dogs are going to have to get euthanized. Like someone, someone in the neighborhood is going to be like, they have to get euthanized. So we were like, I ended up having all these meetings with these dog behavioral specialists. And they talked to me about with pit bulls in general, like what happens the older they get and they got protective and she would have been able to smell the pregnancy. And anyway, so I was like, okay, there goes my like days of walking yeah, dogs that's like this. So we ended up moving back to Australia and we put the dogs at a farm. So they've been living at a farm for two years and we've been paying for them to live at this farm and sending treats and we get little videos and photos and whatever. Anyway, the farm that they've been living at, the woman was like, Hey, so Kato's legs, this is my German shepherd. Kato's legs aren't great. Like they're, 
they're like playing up a little bit. I was like, okay. So we were paying for medicine for him and he'd go to the vets and we'd pay for vet bills and whatever. And then eventually, like, as you know, all know, we've just relocated back. We're in our brand new house, which by the way, has no grass in it. It's all (laughs) fake grass. Like the whole thing is fake grass. There's not like one like real piece of LA. Very (laughs) LA. LA. There's not one real piece of grass. Anyway, I have had guilt for two years about like, the dogs are getting, and of course we're living in Australia, so whatever, but I'm like, the dogs are getting older and I just feel like, I know we have this house, which doesn't have grass and, you know, but when we come back, I do want to try bringing them back and like reintegrating with them and like really being yes. mindful to see how they are with the kids. And, you know, so we've had this like integration, like this transition over the last like few weeks with the kids. Anyway, the dogs could not be more lovable with the children, like unbelievably sweet and gentle and just like they're obsessed. Cato, our German shepherd, Sarah was over the day we got them back. He <laughs> Gets out of this van and is dragging his back legs, his like back completely legs, dragging them. Like, and the woman was like, "Oh, today's a bad day." I was like, "Okay, what does a good day look like?" And she's yeah. like, "Um, well, you know, he can sometimes put a little bit of pressure on his legs." And I did not realize. And now, since I've become like such an expert in this, so if anyone has any tips, let me know. But um my dog has degenerative myelopathy, which is essentially Lou Gehrig's disease for uh, dogs or ALS. So it's this like horrible situation where the spinal cord just starts breaking down. And so like the messages from the brain don't reach the spinal cord. So the legs stop working and then it's eventually moves all the way up to the front legs and then they can't breathe and they can't eat and they die. And so most people have their sort of stage that they decide to euthanize their dog. And for us, like he's got so much life left in him. He's so beautiful. He loves the kids. He's so happy. So we ordered this wheelchair from walk and pets. Um, Mm. and they've been incredible. They helped us like get the dog fitted for this wheelchair. But I'm telling you, Sarah, between, and, and okay. One of the other things is his incontinent. I mean, that's probably the biggest thing. They lose the ability to know like when they're pooing, how to hold on. So his penis. And they're embarrassed by it too. They're embarrassed. So he's pissing, he pisses everywhere like really runny poo everywhere. Oh. And so now we've like brought these dogs back and Mark, who's like, I wouldn't say he's the biggest dog person. <laughs> he is not a dog person, <laughs> Teresa. <laughs> he's been giving me so much shit for saying that to people, but I'm like, babe, I really would not describe you as a dog person. Like I just wouldn't. He like wants them to be in their little area. Like, (laughs) and so we've ended up having a compromise, but Kato is now in dog diapers because of the incontinence. Um, Coda is in dog diapers because of the plastic grass. So we walk them. Okay. (laughs) I walk them literally (laughs) five times a day. I am telling you, I walk them so often and my life was already so busy and so full. And I just see these pitying looks from people around the neighborhood who know all about our, like my like deaf, very old pit bull who like is going to kill your dog if you walk past us. And I'm always like, guys, we're coming through. We'll stay on the right side. You stay on the left. I I have (laughs) to walk. That is so stressful. (laughs) It's so stressful. I have to walk her with a muzzle on. She can't walk without a muzzle because she is like the killer dog. And then the other one's a disabled dog, which is in a wheelchair, who's such a spaz nugget. This dog is like so excitable by the wheelchair, but keeps flipping the wheelchair. Like we'll sort of bang into something and we'll start flipping. So you've got, it's really hard to walk them together because you've got one that you're going to be so on about aggression. And then the other one's just always trying to flip the wheelchair and kind of runs around you in circles and you get tangled up and then you get hit by the frame of the wheelchair. And it's just like, it's been kind of a disaster the last two weeks. Uh, But I've like, because this was my decision to bring them back and to like really show them the best last couple of years of their life. 
Mark's like, cool. So you get to take on more of the responsibility, which includes like hosing out diarrhea poo. I mean, that's what I did for two hours this morning. I mean, (gasps) I put on a true crime podcast, put my phone like in my tits and literally just like hose down diarrhea shit in the front yard. Like, (laughs) hi guys. As like the neighbors walk past, like just doing my usual. Like I'm always out the front hosing down these mats. Oh my God. uh, It is so insane. That's crazy. But they're such beautiful dogs and the kids love them. The kids are so sweet with them and they throw them toys and they, Bodhi loves to feed them. There's something like really um, special about, and it, honestly, having pets, they're probably like, so, I mean, part, part of me is like, maybe they want to be at the farm since now they're having to be walked and whatever. But you know what? Being with their family is like so special that they're yeah. able to be with you guys. And they obviously were like so excited to see you. They're and so like, happy. Like, yeah. Like, wag their tails and they just like and Kato my German shepherd he's never been loved like this before yeah. I just Aww. like I literally wipe his bum I like do like warm oh, wipes buddy. on his bum I wipe the poo away I oh pat him I tell him it's okay when he does his big pisses all over me I was like it's all Aww. okay everything's gonna be okay like and I nurture him so much like a mother yeah, that he's do. so attached to me like it, like when we walk Walk on the road because it's easier to walk him on the road in the wheelchair. Wait, these are he your has twins. To walk next to me. I mean, these are the twins. These are your twins right these now. Are, these are the twins I've manifested. My boy girl twins. They look a little different a little than what they thought they were. A little oh um, my god! But it is. It's been pandemonium. I have to say, it's been crazy. But I feel like I just need the system. I've sort of figured out the you system. Do. Yeah. And Mark keeps changing their food. This is the problem. It's like, oh, you can't do every, that. You can't do that. He's had no. five different brands. Why? Since we've had them. Because I'll be like, we need dog food. He'll just go and get a random dog no, food no, brand. No, 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 okay. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. Back to the logistics. Okay. <laughs> you got to order it. You got to order one brand and it has yes. to be a brand that's like really good for their older bodies, their older digestion. So like a, you know, great like protein or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And then you got to order it to be every like four weeks or whatever it is. And so you do it online because I was just going to go to Tao Waggers because I said to Mark, he brought home I think like Eric pedigree. orders it from Chewy.com and I we're not sponsored oh. by them, but I'm pretty really? sure he orders well, from Chewy. We should Chewy. try and get a sponsorship. Hey, Chewy.com, are you listening to this episode? <laughs> you, this dog episode, they're going to be like, you guys are crazy. Um, um, but yeah, that, no, oh, that's great. So you just, just order delivered. it and then you never run out of dog food because yeah. I think he's just doing it convenience. Like he just doesn't really know. And I'm like, you can't keep changing his food that. like this. And the yeah. last one he just got yesterday was like the jankiest brand. You can't do that. I, we need to have like a higher grade. We can anyway. send you guys a whole, I mean, maybe you daisies like have ones that you love, but we've looked into so many different ones because we have a dog that has a lot of allergies. So um, she like, you, you don't want to like give a dog with a bunch of allergies, like grains and things like that. So she has to have a specific kind of dog food. Um, but there's also like the farmer's dog, which is, um, I think it's called the farmer's dog, but that that's like more of a, um, like it's like frozen and I think you like warm it up mm. and then oh. there's, yeah, there's like freeze dried and then there's like, there's a bunch of different, so that you're not just giving them that like pr- overly processed, like junky yes. dog yes. food. Um, cause it's so bad for their digestive system too. And also I was like, I said to Mark, I had to clean up like sloppy yeah. ass diarrhea and it's because of the food changes so yeah you can't do that you can't, I can't do that mark um, i know <laughs> i know <laughs> he, <laughs> like the fact that he has even let me bring these dogs home it's like, we're, we're gonna cut this part out <laughs> but he'll, I, be like, yeah, uh, he'll be like excuse me what? guys <laughs> um but i you know what i realized like they need us like they need me they need like this nurturing yeah and I'm nervous to leave again because I'm like who will bathe Kato the way I do and when they're in a wheelchair it's hard because they can't rest in a wheelchair because they have to be standing up at all yeah. times so I just kept thinking about the logistics of like how often will they put him in the wheelchair like 
Or is he just always going to be dragging himself around? Aww. Or do I have them like put him in there like every hour or two? I mean, it's so, it's so hard, but he's so not ready to lose his life. Yeah. I just, I see the way he is with the kids and he's such a happy guy and he's, um, mm. always smiling and bouncy and playful. So he doesn't <laughs> seem old. Um, yeah. So anyway, that has been, <laughs> that has really taken up the last two weeks of my life. Like I just, my days are so full and this has added a lot to it. So yeah, that, anyway, that is a lot. My mom actually, um, we always laugh about my mom cause she's like, that's right. She has like so many pets and, and she gives CPR to like lizards that have yeah, drowned. You in the guys pool. heard that. <laughs> <laughs> she's so cute. Um, oh my but God. she's like, you know, she'll have like five dogs and then like a bearded dragon and, you know, like some neighborhood cat she's feeding. And like there's, it's just really, she's so cute and funny. But what's crazy is that her, um, I didn't really notice like her dog obsession until I was sort of like in, um, like in high school. And, um, there's some really cute similarities of like you guys, because not that you're obsessed with dogs, but just like how nurturing and lovely you are with animals. And I take such a special person to like care for an animal when you're, when they're like suffering like that. And, you know, just like being able to like wipe their poo and not get grossed out and like all those things, you know? But, um, I went to Japan to, um, when I was like 16 years old and I was there for like a few months, but as soon as I left, my mom got a dog to replace me. (laughs) (laughs) And, um, I was like going there to, you know, work and I was doing my school online and then I was going to be back. But anyway, she got this miniature Doberman Pinscher. And, um, and she was telling me about it when I was gone. And I was like, wow, she really like replaced me with this dog. (laughs) The moment I got home, um, the dog went directly upstairs to my bed and peed in the middle of my bed. Oh my God. It was was like, like, get out of here. You don't belong here. Yeah. Yeah, I was like so mad, but knew, like knew that that was me knew that like, mm -mm. and so we, we had words, this dog and I for a while, because then (laughs) I would, I opened my suitcase to like unpack my my suitcase when I got back and then she peed inside my suitcase like oh my all God. over my stuff Insta- yes oh no <laughs> yes and she was like oh, her name was Jojo she ended up living so long and she would she so we ended up moving and living next to my grandmother and my grandma had um like dementia and Alzheimer's and and so she like wouldn't remember that she had fed our dogs. Our dog would like go next door to her house, and she'd be like, "Oh, do you want some bacon?" And she'd like feed the dog bacon. Oh my god! And oh so she give him ba- give the dog bacon, and the dog got so like um, overweight from eating from my grandmother <laughs> all the time, <laughs> and then the dog developed diabetes, and oh, like no. then she went blind, but she was like you know and your I'm, mom, like, I'm like this dog's this like a hundred yeah oh my god but, but when she went blind animals are so fascinating you guys but like when she went blind her eyelashes grew super long oh. and they became her feelers and what? so yes and so her eyelashes were like crazy crazy long and she would like kind of run them up against the side the wall and that's how she would know where she was and then um she became so funny and fun and amazing like I still to this day Day, think about that dog because she was her and I were like at each other's throats like constantly when I was a teenager <laughs> she was just like always she messing with my you. stuff she hated me she hated she was like how dare but she would like sleep in this little pile of um blankets in front of our fireplace but she went fully blind and she would like go and find her way to my grandmother's house eat the bacon come back from my grandmother's and then go back to her little like spot in front of the fireplace and that was just like she that was her so thing they're so cute so yeah my mom like you know she took in every stray when I was Aww. a child she would pull in like she'd put a dog in the car with us that was a stray that had the mange on the side of the road and I'd be like oh 
oh, what is that creature? Oh, and she would yeah. be like, oh, it's, you know, it needs love. It's beautiful. It just needs to be nurtured. Totally. Yeah. My, it's just um, so cute. One of my earliest, that's not true. It wasn't one of my earliest. It's just a memory that I have <laughs> is when I was, I was like, one of my earliest, earliest memories was like 15. What? No, it was literally when I was 15. <laughs> I knew it. I was like, but by the way, that's so me because I have the worst memory. <laughs> that's so true. My earliest <laughs> memories, <laughs> memories from when I was 15. One of my only anything. memories mm-hmm. from my childhood. But, um, <laughs> so my mom is like the biggest pushover in every way. Like anyone oh who God. knows my mom knows Love this her. about her. She's... Or the kids just like boss her around, like sh- pot, like literally Prairie, two year old Prairie, owns my mum, just owns her, like Nana, my bum need wiping. Oh Nana, my god, me want snack. Nana, no go upstairs. Nana, like it's so funny. My mum's like, yes, dear. She just says yes to everyone, oh, including you're like, mom. <laughs> don't let them talk to you like that. I know, <laughs> and she's just like, okay. Um, so we had these dogs, which. I would always palm my animals off onto my mom when I'd go to America is when I actually was just starting my career. So I had these like, <laughs> so, so I wasn't even a very young, you know, I was 18 or something anyway. So I had memory. these dogs. Yeah, earliest <laughs> memory, my only memory. Um, I had these oh dogs God. and my mom, again, such a pushover. She would even let the dogs boss her around. So I remember coming to her house and I was like introducing a boyfriend. Okay, I remember who it was. So I was introducing Topher Grace, who was one of my uh, first boyfriends. We had come back to Semaphore to my mum's house and I was like, oh, you know, this is Topher and, you know, come to my childhood home. And like we walk in the door and the dogs are sitting <laughs> on the blue couch, all three of them lined up with bowls on the couch of kangaroo mints, bloody kangaroo mints. What is that? What's a kangaroo mint? Like kangaroo mints. So the meat of kangaroos. Oh, So okay. this kind of like bloody red, stinky, stinky meat on our couch Stop. and my dogs would pick up the meat, put it next to them on the couch, <gasps> then pick it up from the couch and eat it. And my mum was like, hello, welcome, <gasps> welcome to our house. And I was like, oh, my God, mom!" And she was like, well, they don't eat it any other way. They just want to stay watching the television. So I was like, these... These aren't husbands. Like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> it was so gross. I actually have photos. I have photos of the dogs all sitting on the couch, eating from their bowls on How the couch. How do you sterilize? Oh my Is god! It uncooked meats, like uncooked, like foul. I feel and my dogs unwell. would like. I feel just, unwell. <laughs> you should feel unwell because it was freaking gross. Oh my and god! My my mom, like the dog, my dog Chester, who was a border collie, would stockpile <laughs> shits under my mom's bed. Stop it, Teresa! Really get under on the bed get. and shit under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> the house smells so bad. Like our house smells Teresa. so bad. And we had carpet and. They just piss in the carpet and it was just like <laughs> it it was just so crazy it's from like 15 to like 21 these dogs what just like it was Topher like it's fine no he, we laughed about it so much like we <laughs> thought it was the funniest thing I think we told that story a thousand times to so many different people oh my god um, and it, he was not the only boyfriend like over the years that like these dogs like lived for a long time and my mum still just kept doing it and I was like but it did do you know what it did like it made me when have I have a very really out, good gut biome <laughs> <laughs> but I got really I'm so sensitive about dog smells in the house I hate yeah, I'm now think? like so affected You're by dog OCD fur, about being clean <laughs> being clean like I it it really manifested itself into like being insane about like dog cleanliness and so yeah. which is just so funny because Mark is like that but 10 times worse than me because he's like that about the outdoors as well yes. yeah <laughs> Whereas yeah. I'm like oh it's outdoors like you can't smell it as bad and he was just like you can ah! 
He's like, my beautiful house. Like he's just um, so stressing about it. Anyway, that that's is, so, oh that. my God, that's hysterical. Well, my mom, I have one more is that my mom had this other dog, Spanky. And anytime I would bring anybody around. So like Eric multiple times came to my parents' house. And as soon as the door had opened, my mom would have to run through the house saying like, and she, she didn't do this the first time. So the first time she like comes forward and goes to give him a hug. And then the dog bites Eric and like the, on the leg. <laughs> what? And then she, and then afterwards she'd be like, Oh, oh you can't hug me. Cause he'll, he's like really protective. Uh, and we're like, maybe let somebody know. Like <laughs> we didn't know we were going to get bit. So I was like, oh gosh, they really like don't like my boyfriends or like whatever. The dog bit me too. Like if I went to hug my mom, the dog would like nip me and then I'd have this like bruise on the middle. So like oh kind, of, kind of like um between the legs, like not on my vagina, but like on my leg, like my upper thigh. thigh. Oh my <laughs> on my God. upper thigh. And I'd be like, oh my God, it's baking. What the hell? I know. But so many of her dogs, I don't know if it's because she like takes in the stray they get so but, like, meshed they're so <laughs> they're so like aggressive and like create you know her house if if any Aww, bell goes off she gets she's got the like rejects. four dogs being crazy in the back well you heard it we did the podcast with her oh my god that and was i was right. like mom here's the thing it's like you could do yes. our podcast but you have to figure out a way to shut those dogs up because <laughs> they all bark like crazy. Oh my God. Oh my and God. So it's- that's my trauma is that I can't handle loud barking dogs because I'm yes. like, Oh no, <laughs> I'm not okay with it. I'm not and okay I'm with it. I'm scared of getting bit. <laughs> so uh, people were asking me on, um, on the mother days, like uh, I posted this photo of me and Paris Hilton. Oh, and yes. I suddenly got all these like DMs from people who are obsessed with her. I'm like, oh my God, how do you know her? And it was like, everyone's like, well, you got to tell us like what a party like that is like. And anyway, we had, so I met Paris at Sears baby shower and I used to hang out with her when I first got to Hollywood and I used Mm -hmm. to go to her big parties and she like had a house at Malibu and I would always go and it was at the height of the simple life like it was like right then when it was like that's hot everyone was about her and I remember being so starstruck when I was 18 I was I brought a friend from Adelaide who was yeah unbelievably obsessed with her (laughs) and she would like shake cry at these parties and I was like, okay, I can't bring you to them. Like, I'm oh actually just not going to bring God. you to them because you're so insane. And the funniest thing is, is that I met Paris's husband, Carter. Carter and his brother, Courtney, used to own this company called Vive Vodka. And they were two <laughs> of my first friends in LA. Oh my so gosh. I didn't know anyone in LA, but I'd always hang out with Carter and Courtney. That's crazy. So, I hung out with them for maybe like two years at the, you know, the very early years in LA. And that was like crazy. And I'd go to those clubs at like, yes. do. do you remember like do and like well, all those like fun clubs? Not really. I didn't go out much. <laughs> <laughs> Shocker to all the daisies. Uh, I went out to... I think Hyde was one of them. Hyde, yes. I used to love Hyde. I went there. I think I've gone there twice. I saw Ryan Phillippe there, like when I first, and I was like, oh my God. There was some other big one where I saw like Jesse Beal there, and I was like, ooh, this place is crazy. But that, I think that's yeah. it. Like, otherwise I went to like a few like dive bars and mostly went out when I was in Chicago, but um, I was not a big going out it. person. I, I, I like to I go to like a, the library ale house in Santa Monica. It was like a, a pub. I liked pubs. Oh, I'd say you're cool though. That's kind of cooler. I went like 
to the club. club. Like I got to LA <laughs> and I was like, I'm out. I was going to the oh Roosevelt bar, which was like <laughs> such a thing. And I was just always on a mission to like find hot celebrities, take their photos and post them on Facebook. So I could be like, oh, yeah, I'm <laughs> hang out with these like cool hot celebrities. Whoa. Or like hook up with them. That would be the other thing. Like <laughs> I, ju- I don't have to have sex with them. I just want to make out with them. I remember seeing Brian oh Gillipi and being like, I've never seen someone so hot in my life. And this like, um, song, you know that. Yes, young yes. folks. Dude. That was playing, and it was like slow motion. And I saw Ryan Philippi through the crowd, and that was on. So every time I hear that song, I just picture Ryan Philippi like turning around, <laughs> and I was like, "It's Sebastian from Cruel Intentions." Uh, what a movie. Um, Anyway, so this was a blast from the past. I rock up at Sears. I don't know anyone um, because it was only girls allowed. And I was like, okay, so I know a few of Sears' best friends, like including yeah. Kathy Griffin, who like we've been hanging out with like in Sydney and she's one of Sears' really good friends. Anyway, Very so funny. I'm kind of like, oh, I don't really know anyone. And um, and Paris walks in and I was like, oh my God, she just had a baby. And I knew that she follows us. Um, and so I was like, went to introduce myself. I was like, hi, I'm Teresa. And she was like, Tez remember, remembered me from back in the day, follows us, like follows our family, like knows that I do the podcast with oh you. My gosh. Um, it was so divine. I actually spent the whole like baby shower sitting next to her. We were just like eating food and laughing and re- and she was explaining to me what sliving is. Because I was it? like, I saw your thing and I was like, it's what is sliving. I thought it was sliving. I thought it was sliving. So I kept, she was like, she's like, you're a sliving mom. And I was like, what is a sliving mom? And she's like, it made it up. And I'm like, wait, but what, like, what, what is, is it? it? So it's slay living. Slay living oh, okay. mom. So instead of like winning, you're like sliving, you're slay oh, living. Okay, okay. And I could not help but laugh about this. Like I just thought it was so funny and I was kind of giving her a little bit of shit and whatever. Turns out she obviously quite appreciates that. And like was like, hey, I'm having this birthday party next weekend. It's so nice to reconnect. We talked about parenting and how she's got two little babies. And um, so she invited Mark and I to her birthday party. And we had another friend's birthday party first, like someone who we're really close with, one of my best friends, Christy. And like we were being such grandma and grandpas. Like we we finished Christie's at like 10 and we were so tired. And Paris's yes. party started at 7.30 that we we're like, Oh, can we even be bothered going? And then Mark's like, we can't not go because this will be such an experience. Like we should go. And I was like, all right, we should go. We rock up. It is the most out of the world, like (laughs) thing you've ever seen, like the marquee and the pink Bentley and the like, Oh my God. All these incredible people that you only see in magazines and like (laughs) the music is pumping. And then there's like, um, Meg, the stallion rapping, like, yo, 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 like she's at the front rapping. And I'm just like, Oh my God. And then Sia is singing happy birthday. And there's all these incredible people that like, I'm obsessed with there. And I was such a loser, like dancing on the dance floor, being like, I'm having the best night of my life. <laughs> like it was, and there's this ball crawl. And then there was all these in like Heidi Klum's in the ball crawl, like throwing balls up and everyone's just like oh dancing gosh. in this ball crawl. And the music is like off the chain. Of course, the she's a DJ, off, right? She's a DJ. Yeah. Music. I literally felt like I was back in the club and I was like, oh my God, mama five, like really going for <laughs> it. And so many like funny, weird, wild things happened. And then eventually I was like, okay, I'm really tired. It's like 12, it's, it's midnight. <clears throat> Let's go home. But we hadn't said hi to Paris yet because, I mean, there actually weren't that many people there. There was maybe like 70, 70 or 80 people there. Yeah. Um, and I like the fact that we even got invited was so sweet. But I was like, oh, Mark. And she told me to bring Mark. She knew all about Mark and our yeah. kids. And, Cute. and so we walked over and she was looking like a million dollars, like unbelievably gorgeous. And I was like, hi, Paris. Like, thank you for inviting us. Like, Mark, you know, here's Mark. And she was like, 
you guys, your family, it's like, it's a dream. It's like a fairy tale. I, she was so unbelievably sweet, was just, and so genuine. And, and it's so interesting because Mark was like really taken aback by her warmth and her genuine like sweetness and like how she really saw us and she took us to the side to talk about our family and showed us videos Aww. of her little son and and I was like oh it's so interesting like when you're an outsider and you look at these extremely famous sort of iconic people right in this situation like there is the character of who she is and who we think she is but then that yeah. actual real side that I've really connected with is like, just like anyone else, like the way she talks about her family and the way like she mm. loves her son and is showing videos of her kids to me and just like getting tears in her eyes, talking about motherhood and, and then appreciating like mother to mother. We're having these real conversations among this like insane backdrop of this party. <laughs> it was like crazy Hollywood party. It was, yeah. And it was like, but it was such a lovely mm. reminder of just like the humanness that, that exists within everyone. Like no matter what they look like or their pe the pedestal yes. that we put them on, like you strip that all away. And like, we just had this really beautiful, like genuine connection. And like Mark was like, I really love her. Like she's really special. Aww. And yeah, so it was really, it was really cool. Um, it was such a good experience. But yeah, I've been having lots of kind of weird while like between the Oscars parties the week before and then that. <laughs> it's it's just so I did funny. Look, look at your like Instagram <laughs> over the last couple of weeks and I was like, Jesus, like girlfriend is out like out. partying it, it, we have been like out. you must be so tired because I know what oh, you do during the day oh, I know how much you I'm drive so it's over <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and then now you know I'm like cleaning up like dog shit and wiping oh my bums and like I just can't I need a photo massages. of you with the sprayer the earphones the um, phone in the tits and oh. um, I need a photo of this <laughs> this there, there will be many photos shared we need, we I need mean, a picture Sure. It's um, just so funny, like the diff the different areas of life. Like you could be doing that one minute and then the next you're literally like wiping up splattered diarrhea mm. off of walls and grass and, and clothes. Like, oh yesterday I caught his diarrhea. No. He, I was putting his nappy on. I was just or diaper. I was literally putting it on. And as I was going no, underneath, I can't. diarrhea just started pouring out of his ass. Oh. And I cupped it in my hand I can't <laughs> I just because it was better than it going on the grass Mark I saying that it was on the grass I have to say that I'm <laughs> might be more Mark than you <laughs> Mark oh I gotta God. say I feel like I'm probably yes. more to your side when it comes to this stuff oh than, my god uh, like a full that's a, cupping a cupping in the head <laughs> I can't I'm gonna throw up right now I can't handle that oh, anyway <laughs> lovely oh my god well daisies thanks for joining us for another uh just crazy tales and <laughs> stories and all the things uh we love you guys and as always you can find us on apple podcast spotify or wherever you get your podcast bye daisy bye bye Woo.